to the Working Woman Report, I'm Allison Hobbs. During the ancient times of Greece and Egypt, female healers were well-respected members of the community. Their practices represented a synthesis of the physical and spiritual aspects of healing. Unfortunately, perception towards women gradually changed, and during the Middle Ages, female healers were often considered to be diabolic. Gone were the days of ancient traditions of deifying women, their bodies, and their connection to nature. Luckily today, besides the modern doctors we're all familiar with, there are still healers that use ancient recipes of plants and ointments to cure disease and improve overall health. One of these contemporary healers is Amy Jo Accardi, a self-proclaimed healthy lifestylist and architect of vibrant transformation. She uses herbalism and acupuncture to help make people's bodies strong and resilient. She also says she guides individuals to adopt healthier habits so that they can live more fulfilling lives. I sat down with Amy Jo to find out more about what the business of a healer is really like. Amy Jo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, this is so exciting. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I can already feel the good energy coming, <laughs> coming across the table. Tell me a little bit about what you, how you define yourself mm -hmm. uh, and what exactly you do as a, as a healer, mm -hmm. something that not everybody knows about. Thank you. Um, I, I call myself a vibrant health specialist. So I'm licensed as an acupuncturist. I have a master's degree in Chinese medicine. And my specialty is working with people with all levels of the people that I work with, meaning I work a lot with nutrition. I work a lot with real food. And I also help people understand what their deeper needs are, what their spirit is yearning for, what they really are looking for in their lives, and how to generate more of the good energy that they're hoping for, regardless of where their life is now. Okay, I guess we'll start off with, how, how does someone obtain good energy? What is good energy? What is good energy? You know, that's such a great question, because I think, um, I think we all know when we've had a powerful moment. You know, when, when something opens up in life and you feel warm, you feel tingly, and you feel inspired. And I think when you add all those things up, you realize that you're actually sort of in tune with something that feels more like yourself, sometimes a little uncomfortable because it's new, but you also know that it's something you want more of. So how do you find that energy? Is it a matter of getting quiet? For some people, it's quiet. Uh, for some people, getting quiet is very uncomfortable. I think, that, I think that we find the energy by learning to pay attention to when we feel like something positive is happening inside of us. And for me, um, I notice that I'm very inspired, that I'm excited, and that my body physically feels lighter. How do you get quiet, and, and how do you find that energy? The best way to get quiet is through meditation. And for, you know, for most of us, starting meditation is painful, or is scary, or uncomfortable. And the beautiful thing is learning to just be quiet for five or 10 minutes a day and sit still and breathe without checking our phones, without thinking about what we're gonna do next, without running our task list is actually the best vacation we could ever take. Well, tell me a little bit about your personal story and mm -hmm. what brought you on this journey. Mm -hmm. When I was 19, my aunt brought her boyfriend home for Christmas and he had this book on herbalism. And I was like, what is that? And it made so much sense to me. I, I always wanted better answers for healthcare. I wanted to feel like we could live more naturally. I wanted to feel like we could be more autonomous and that we could, we could make choices for ourselves that help us live longer and feel great without a lot of medication. And I started studying herbalism on my own and one day I learned about acupuncture and it was like the clouds parted and the angels were singing and I knew that was my job. What is acupuncture? I mean, we just you know automatically think the needles uh, and, and I've done it before, so, mm -hmm. it, but obviously you love it. Mm -hmm. So what is it and what will it do for someone? In reality, acupuncture is a spiritual medicine. And I think a lot of what's happened in the U.S. is it's a lot of people just relate it to maybe shoulder pain or plantar fasciitis or, you know, a busted knee. Um, but historically, acupuncture was founded in um, helping humans nourish their destiny. 
to wake up to the depth of who we really are and to become all of that in this lifetime as soon as possible. So what does that have to do with all the needles? I know, isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> so when we, when we put the needles in, we're finding points, and the points are on channels. So if you look up acupuncture online, you'll see uh, usually a line drawing of a Chinese man with all of these lines all over him, and those are the channels. And there's a lung channel, a liver channel, a heart channel. They're all related to the organs in the body. But what is really cool is all of those channels have a name. So there's a, ch there's a point on the heart channel here on the wrist that's called spirit gate. And what that is, is it helps your heart open and close appropriately so we know when to let the right things in and when to not let things in. So if someone is interested in exploring some of these practices, what is your suggestion? Well, I think it's, I think one, it's good to ask the people in your life, to ask who you know. Uh, I think it's also a great idea to do some searching online um, and look at people's websites and read w what they're writing. You know, maybe look at their Instagram, their social media, and see what kind of feeling you get from their language, their presentation, and the things that they're interested in. Because we're all so different. You know, you want to be working with someone who has your interest in mind. Despite what skeptics may say, spiritual medicine has proven results. Amy Jo says acupuncture and other forms of Eastern medicine are a combination of healing both the body and the soul, which for some people produces better results than regular medical treatments. Coming up, we find out how a healer gets a successful business up and running. The only game in town is right here at Resorts World Casino in Queens. We have over 5,000 games on two spacious floors, plus great dining and entertainment. New members can win up to $1,000 by playing Hit Me Blackjack. Take a hit, take a spin, take away free play. Earn points for gaming, dining, and shopping. Resorts World Casino, New York City. Come play, dine, and unwind. Where high values drive high demand. Where getting ahead comes from giving back. Where the education earns national recognition. Where here at Malloy College. Money Magazine's number one value also in the nation. Welcome back to the Working Woman Report. I'm Allison Hans. Amy Jo continues to illustrate what it is to be a healer in these modern times. And for those who have heard of these alternative treatments but need a little convincing to give them a go, Amy Jo shares with us a detailed explanation of our process. So what is your business? Because we are a show about women in business. How is your business set up? and? Is it different packages? Is it individual consulting? Uh, how did it get started? So I have a private practice in downtown Boston. It's called Flourish Boston. And I work one-on-one -on -one with people. So typically people will come in and we'll have a full hour consult. So we'll go through the health, their health history. We go through goals, we go through dreams, you know, their dreams of what their life can be. And I also do an assessment and I, and I decide, you know, what's going on with their health that they need help with. And the health is the physical and it's also the spiritual and the emotional. And so once we do that, we, we set out some kind of plan to work together. So typically I do packages in my office because I, I like to work with people at least five or six times um, in the beginning because that's when we really get the momentum going and it's kind of like we shed the weight of history and we're reminded of who we are again at the core. Why do we need to shed that weight? It, 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 if the, how does the weight like build up and what is it and how do you get rid of it? Right. Well, the weight comes from life experience, you know, and a lot of life experiences are great and then we all have some that aren't great. And if you think about perhaps how you handled a situation when you were 15 versus how you might handle it now, you have more knowledge now. 
And so a lot of times we make decisions at a younger stage of development that aren't actually serving us now when we're older, when we're conscious, and we're more aware of the things that we want in life. So how long have you been in business for? And how do you reconcile the business portion mm -hmm. with the spirituality <laughs> of it right. all? Well, sometimes, you know, I have to remember to lock the door. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to, to sort of get back to these worldly things sometimes. Uh, I started 10 years ago in Charleston, South Carolina, and I met my now husband, and I moved to Boston five years ago. So I started over here, but I've been in business for about 10 years. And for me, um, it's been such an amazing outlet for my creativity. I love doing flowers. I love having a beautiful space, and I love creating a space where people feel comfortable and inspired so we can create a transformation together. So for me, because I have the creativity, it's worth doing the accounting and the books and paying the bills because that's what enables me to have the good part. Was there a learning curve on the business end uh, with putting the business together and, and the accounting and, and paying the bills? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I have wonderful help, actually. There's a wonderful organization in Boston called Boston Business Women, and it's over 10,000 women at this point. But I have met an amazing lawyer, an amazing finance person, a wonderful broker, and all of the people that are helping me so far are all women. And so their support has been incredible because there's a, my husband is amazing in a lot of things with business, but there's so much about being a woman in business that he'll never understand. And so for me to have help of a lawyer who's female, it changed everything when we went through you know, a 50-page lease and the type of things, the type of hurdles that you have to go through to create the business of your dreams, you need to find the right help who understands your vision and doesn't try to put you in a box that isn't right for you. You know, they want to help you grow the dream. Right now, and I, I don't even, I, people talk about tech addiction and the phones. I don't think we've even like touched the surface on <laughs> what, what an issue it is right, uh, right now. What is your, philosophy on people taking a break from the chaos of 24-7 bombardment of right. news and information. Right, the leash. Yeah. The leash. Uh, I think it's one of the best things that any of us can do for ourselves, and I think that we all immediately notice a difference. Uh, for to me, break the leash. To break the leash, you know, and like in my practice, people come in for an acupuncture treatment, and it's 45 minutes of no phone. And, you know, and they have a wonderful treatment and they, they transform in that moment. And they're like, I haven't been so relaxed in, in so long since the last time I've been here. And I'm like, right, we put your phone down. We turned the lights down. We played some amazing music and we did some acupuncture, which actually changes your vibration. And for me and my husband at home, we both practice yoga. We both meditate. So we have daily practices where we are free from electronics and then we can reset and then we don't feel like the electronics are driving us. They can become our tools again and they can become something on the side. Do you have any practical things that people can do to break that addiction? Oh, definitely. My favorite thing that I've done is I've completely turned off my ringer on my phone. I have no ringer, I have no vibration because I know I'm gonna check my phone every 20 minutes anyway. I'm not going to miss anything. Uh, I also think that it's important to start some type of practice, some type of daily practice, whether it's meditation, whether it's going for a walk, um, or whether it may be cooking your breakfast every morning, but doing something that you work into your schedule every day without your phone or your iPad or your television. Do you think it's, um, I don't, uh, at this point in time, everywhere I turn, there is another yoga studio and it, or meditation practices are growing, or there seems to be this yearning for some sort of peace mm, in this absolutely. chaotic world. Is that what, what are people saying when they come to you? I think the, the peace is exactly what we're looking for. I, we are, we're so, we're in this world right now where you get a text and you feel guilty if you don't get back to that person within 24 hours, you know, or maybe less, maybe an hour. And so I think that we're craving our own rhythm. We're craving our own relationship to the rhythm of the earth. Is it Monday or is it Friday? Or, you know, is it morning 
for evening? Is it summer or winter? And recognizing the light, the temperature, the way you feel in your body, the foods that are fresh at the market that week that are seasonal. And getting back into that vibration is what puts us into an authentic schedule and we remind ourselves who we are. We get back in line with our own heartbeat. While advances in technology may be very useful in helping us stay connected to those far away, it's also proven to keep us disconnected from those close to us. Amy Jo's process of vibrant transformation encourages people to not only take care of their bodies, but to be more open and connected to the environment and the people around us. Coming up, we learn some simple tips to brighten up those days or moments when we're feeling sluggish, a bit down and or unmotivated. The only game in town is right here at Resorts World Casino in Queens. We have over 5,000 games on two spacious floors, plus great dining and entertainment. New members can win up to $1,000 by playing Hit Me Blackjack. Take a hit, take a spin, take away free play. Earn points for gaming, dining, and shopping. Resorts World Casino, New York City. Come play, dine, and unwind. Where high values drive high demand. Where getting ahead comes from giving back. Where the education earns national recognition. Where here at Malloy College. Money Magazine's number one value all-star in the nation. Welcome back to the Working Woman Report. I'm Allison Hans. We continue our chat with natural healer Amy Jo as she shares with us some experiences of people she's worked with in the past, what their issues were, and what her process was like to help them overcome their challenges. Can you give us an example of someone that you've worked with? What was their situation before? and the transformation. A lot of people that come to see me end up getting off medications. Uh, they, many people tell me they get more from me than working with their therapist. I think a lot of people do come in for, I work primarily with digestive issues, so they come in with a digestive problem and they get a side of meditation with it or they get a new idea about their diet that helps them lose 30 pounds. And feel healthier and feel more inspired about life because we're tapping into who they really are and they're letting go of those habits that created that weight in the first place. Do you think there are specific things that women are dealing with that men are not dealing with in the, the body, the mind? Absolutely. I think it's such an amazing time for women because we have so much education, so much freedom. The world is changing in a way where we're getting a lot of the respect that we've deserved for a long time. And we, we have to fight for it, but we don't have to fight in the same way. And I think that sisterhood has never been stronger. And I think that we're learning how to love and support other women in a way that we want them to succeed as much as we want ourselves to succeed. So if there was some readings or what would your advice be to someone who just feels a little burnt out right now and you're like, oh, you know what, this is a book that, I, that right. I've read or why don't you try this? Yeah. What, let's get some like practical things. Out. I have a couple. I really love, there's a book called You Are a Badass that it, every woman needs to read and it just reminds you of your spark and of your just authentic ability to be everything that you dreamed of. That one's fantastic. I also really love Gabrielle Bernstein. Uh, mm -hmm. She has a lot, um, May Cause Miracles is a wonderful one. Spirit Junkie was very transformational for me. And my other favorite is Danielle Laporte. And I love the Firestarter sessions for people that are just starting to wake up to, I'd like things to be a little different. And so I start them with the Firestarter sessions. And she has another book called The Desire Map Okay. that actually helps you map out changes in your life to transform. What do you hope with your business uh, in the next few years? Where would you like it to grow, or what are your goals? That's a great idea. Uh, 
you know, I'm so proud of how much it's grown already. I support a lot of professional women in downtown Boston who are so vibrant already and they're becoming even more vibrant and alive and aware of who they are and what they want to be creating in the world. And where I see it going is I really want um, a little bit more of a, a retail space where every woman and several men walk in and find amazing tea and cookbooks and cookware and acupuncture and meditation classes and all of the things that help us create a healthy life now. Interesting. So you really want more like a, a, a store, a store that people can come or a peaceful place. It's a peaceful lifestyle inspiration den. Yes. <laughs> and when you talk about nutrition, mm -hmm. what's your advice? I mean, I'm sure it's different for everyone because everyone has mm -hmm. different needs. But what do you find people are gravitating towards right now, mm -hmm. food wise and everything's you know, very quick and, and fast, uh, what people don't have time to cook or they don't know how to cook, <laughs> a bit of both. Uh, what, what do you suggest? Yeah, I think you're touching on, there's so much confusion mm -hmm. around diet and what we're supposed to eat. And the more you study it, sometimes the more confused you get. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's why I do what I do is uh, I'm a restorative diet expert and I help people figure out which diet is best for them. I think the biggest issue today is most people are undernourished. I think that we go for quick foods, and I think that um, we also tend to get reeled into marketing too much. And I, as a former restaurant employee for over 20 years, I know that you know starch is one of those things that is a big money maker. So you know these big rice bowls or things with a lot of starch, and they taste good in the moment, but we're not getting the nutrients from them. And so what I recommend for most people is more cooked non-starchy vegetables is a great place to start. Okay. And I also recommend upgrading the quality of meats and dairy. That, you know, buying things from local farms, buying better quality meat and maybe eating less of it and you'll feel so much better. So if people want to find out more about you, where should they go? FlourishBoston.com. And I'm also on Instagram at Flourish underscore Boston. And Flourish, how did you come up with the, the name? What, what, how did that resonate with you? Well, when I think about the reality of what healthcare should be, everyone should be more vibrant, more awake, more alive, more inspired, and more themselves, which is flourishing. Wonderful. Well, I, I love your energy. You. And I love all that you do. And I, I'm anxious to learn more. I want, want or interested. Yeah. I don't want to be anxious about anything. Thank <laughs> I'm, you so much for having I'm, me. I'm interested in learning more. So uh, thank you so much for being here and sharing your expertise and knowledge. It was a real pleasure. Anytime, thank you. It's well known that eating your five a day can dramatically improve your health. A recent study from the Imperial College of London suggests that eating 10 portions of fruit and vegetables a day significantly decreases the risk of cancer and heart disease and may well prolong your life for a few years. So you may want to consider following Amy Jo's advice by incorporating more conscious eating habits into your routine. Well, that's all for this week's edition of the Working Woman Report. To find out more on these amazing women, head to our website, workingwomanreport.com, or connect with us in the social media world via Facebook or Twitter. Join us next time for more stories on our fantastic women. Who knows, maybe you're next. See you then.